great colors, very high brightness, and of course, inky deep blacks. What do these three things have in common? Well, that none of them is related to the fact that the projector is laser. In fact, classic lamp-based projectors are slowly disappearing from the market anyway, but the marketing propaganda has gone so far that I decided to record an explanation. What is so-called laser projector, how it works, and what varieties it has? You will learn about it in today's episode. Here we go! You will probably admit that the phrase laser projector sounds quite futuristic. Most buyers intuitively imagine a device that shoots a laser beam directly at the screen and draws the image pixel by pixel with it. And if it was the case, it would be possible to get all the qualities I mentioned in the introduction without any trouble. There is just one problem, it completely doesn't work like that. And by far the more appropriate name is a projector with a laser light source. This is because the technology replaces the projector lamp with laser light source while the rest of the device remains unchanged. So we still have some image sensor, processor and the lens with its limitations. And it is these three elements that determine what kind of blacks a given projector is able to produce, how faithful the colors are and above all, how good the sharpness and resolution of the image are. So what is the benefit of replacing the lamp with a laser and why is it so fashionable? So the real advantages are several, yet they depend on what kind of laser we talk about. Currently, we can find two solutions on the market. The first one is a blue laser with a phosphor wheel. The principle of its operation is very similar to LED light bulbs. The laser beam excites the phosphor and white light is produced, which is full spectral. This means that in order to get color primaries from it, it must be filtered out by a matrix or by the color wheel in DLP projectors. In practice, this type of laser doesn't provide more saturated colors than a classic lamp in a projector. The color gamut, especially important in 4K HDR movies and games, doesn't become richer, nor does it eliminate the rainbow effect in DLP projectors, which many users rightly complain about. This effect causes us to see a rainbow glow behind bright contours when the image moves dynamically. Of course, there are people who are more or less sensitive to this phenomenon, so it's always worth testing for yourself if you want to buy a DLP projector. To sum up the subject of the laser with the phosphor wheel, we can say that this solution doesn't improve the image quality in any significant way. The second type of light source uses three RGB lasers. Such a design actually has an advantage over a lamp. Due to the fact that wavelengths have a narrow bandwidth, we automatically have a richer color gamut. And there is no need for a color wheel in DLP, so there is less rainbow effect. In this case, it's safe to say that the laser is better than lamp in these two respects. The question reminds whether there is a big difference. So in terms of the rainbow effect, the matter is debatable. Lasers may or may not work faster than the color wheel, so it depends on the manufacturer. As for the color gamut, the matter is more complex. In fact, such strongly saturated colors offered by projectors with three color lasers cannot be obtained by traditional method. However, we should bear in mind that strong colors are not a synonym for correct colors. For regular Full HD movies, the desired color space is Rec. 709, which is the narrowest one in the diagram you can now see on the screen. This can be obtained with almost every technology used in home theater projectors. And if we are talking about movies and games in 4K HDR, they use a very wide BT2020 color gamut, thanks to which it's possible to correctly reproduce the very saturated colors that occur in nature. You can see an example now on the screen. The problem is, however, that most of video content, whether on Ultra HD Blu-ray discs or in streaming applications, is limited to the DCI-P3 color space because movie studios usually operate in this system. Full or nearly full reproduction of this color gamut is possible in premium lamp-based projectors such as Epson, JVC or Sony. So you can't say that the RGB laser doesn't give anything on the subject of colors, but it's not a big gain with the content we have available in homes today. I also make it clear that the ability to obtain saturated colors has nothing to do with the faithful reproduction of color or the smoothness of tonal transitions. These two much more important things depend on the image sensor and processor used in the device, not on the light source. From a consumer perspective, it can be quite a challenge to learn which technology is used in a particular projector. Is it a blue laser and phosphor, which contributes nothing to image quality, or an advanced three-color solution? Let's take a walk through the websites of popular manufacturers, starting with Hisense. Here, in the case of portable projectors or selected laser TVs, that is, short throw projectors with a screen included, you will find that an RGB laser is used. But there is, for example, such model as the 100L5HD, and I don't see on its subpage any clear information about what we will find inside. 
Of course, you can go to the store and check whether the rainbow effect is visible or whether the color saturation is satisfying. However, it will be a heavily subjective test in such conditions, which may mismatch with your impression in home. A popular manufacturer like Optoma does not provide such information on its website. To me, this seems strange. It's like a car manufacturer hiding whether the engine runs on diesel or gasoline. However, we can find the clue specifically here. Evidently, the picture suggests us that it's a simpler solution with a phosphor wheel, and this is confirmed by the data we have collected while performing display calibration for our clients. This unfortunately means a poor color gamut and an unfavorable rainbow effect. At ViewSonic and BenQ, such information is more likely to be found on the website. It is worth mentioning that manufacturers also offer small projectors with LED light source, and this is similar to the three-color laser. It is worse on the site at Ipson. No information available. Here, fortunately, again, I can help by sharing my own measurements and say that this manufacturer mostly uses a solution with phosphor wheel. So do the other two high-end manufacturers, that is Sony and GVC. However, all of those use additional filters to increase the color gamut coverage in higher models of their products, as well as chips that do not cause the rainbow effect. Since we have already discussed the laser's impact on image quality, let's now talk about its other advantages. The first thing that manufacturers emphasize is the durability of such a light source. Typically declared is 20 to 30,000 hours before the brightness drops by half. This is many times more than for lamps, which lifespan is specified at 3 to 5,000 hours. The issue is that for lamps, these declared values are a complete myth. It is often so that after exceeding only 1,500 hours, the brightness already drops noticeably. Sometimes it's possible to get to 2,000s, but I also know many cases where owners bought a new lamp after around 1,000 hours. In the case of lasers, unfortunately, I do not have such precise data, although two of my customers experienced a situation where the source lost a significant amount of power after less than 3,000 hours. In one case, the problem was resolved by warranty, while in the other, it was much worse. The only solution was to replace the entire module, which was priced at more than $5,000. At that point, it was debatable whether his Sony projector was still worth that much in a used condition. While I have no doubt that the laser is more durable than lamp, in case of problems, it's a little bit like a battery in an electric car. It's unlikely to be worth repairing. If you want to carefully consider the economic aspect, Let's calculate how much a new lamp costs and how much each hour of viewing will cost. It is unlikely to be much. The second piece of information that often appears in advertisement for a laser light source is the lower power consumption for the same projector brightness. I have never verified this information as it would be very difficult because there are no two projectors that are the same but differ only in this aspect. Even if there was such a difference, it's unlikely that the savings would amount to more than a few dollars per month. And when it comes to brightness, laser designs are not inherently brighter than their lamp counterparts. Mostly, the real brightness of the projector oscillates somewhere around 2000 lumens in the case of more expensive models. Here, it's worth noting that the values given in the catalog can greatly differ from the actual state. In the case of the popular Optoma, even 60% less than quoted by the manufacturer is not surprising, but it's a broader topic for another episode. There's also a third aspect that manufacturers often boast about, namely that these types of projectors do not need to warm up or cool down after prolonged use. This is not entirely true, but let's not get into this and just appeal to common sense. Does it matter to anyone that a lamp-based projector cools down and moments after turning it off you can still hear the fans? I dare to doubt it. I think we are slowly reaching the end, so it's time for a brief summary. A laser projector is still an ordinary projector, however using a laser light source instead of a lamp. This means that it does not automatically offer a much better picture or that it suddenly becomes an alternative to a TV. There are two laser solutions that differ in quality and it's sometimes difficult to find the information which one was used in the model one is interested in. The biggest advantage of the laser is durability, although even there can be some unpleasant surprises. Anyway, the market is clearly heading towards replacing lamps with laser modules, so in the future there will not even be a dilemma. However, this doesn't mean that the great lamp-based projectors, such as Ipson TW9400, are unworthy of attention in spite of the fact that they continue to be on the market. I myself use a lamp-based projector, the GVC RS540, and I'm absolutely in no hurry to change. And this is because, as I discussed in the video, a modern light source makes little or no difference in image quality. The clear differences between home projectors are mainly due to the quality of the lens, image sensor and processor, as well as software. I'm eager to discuss it in next episode, so make sure to leave a sub so you don't miss it out.